Hey everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing my experience working on an exciting Kaggle competition called Child Mind Institute Problematic Internet Use. This competition is focused on predicting the severity of problematic internet use in children and adolescents based on their physical activity data. The goal is to identify early signs of problematic internet use, which is becoming a growing concern in today's digital age, especially among young people. The competition dataset includes physical fitness measures like accelerometer data, sleep patterns, and even parental assessments of internet addiction. By analyzing this data, the aim is to develop models that can predict problematic internet usage to help trigger early interventions and promote healthier digital habits. In this video, I'll walk you through my entire approach, from data cleanup to model building with random forest. Let's jump right in. In this code snippet, we are setting ourselves up with a bunch of handy tools for working with data and building a machine learning model. First, we import pandas, which helps us easily manipulate and analyze data in tabular form, like spreadsheets. Then, we bring in numpy, which is great for numerical calculations and working with arrays. We also load matplotlib's plotting library to create visualizations and Seaborn, which makes it even easier to create beautiful statistical graphics. Next, we get some functions from scikit-learn, like train test split for splitting our dataset into training and testing sets, the random forest classifier for building our model, and metrics like classification report and confusion matrix to evaluate our model's performance. We also import standard scalar to standardize our data, making sure it's on a similar scale, and PCA, principal component analysis, for reducing the dimensionality of our data, which helps in visualizing and improving model performance. Overall, these imports give us a solid foundation to work with data and develop a machine learning solution. In this part of the code, we are focused on loading and getting our data ready for analysis. First, we load our training and testing datasets from CSV files using pandas, which makes it easy to read and handle tabular data. The training data is read from a specified path, and we store it in a variable called train data, while the test data goes into test data. After loading the data, we take a peek at the first few rows of the training dataset with the head function. This gives us a snapshot of the data's structure and contents, showing various columns like basic demo sage, CGS CGS score, and others, along with their respective values for different entries. This initial exploration helps us understand what features we have available and whether there are any missing values we might need to address later on. Overall, this step is crucial for setting the stage for further analysis and model building. In this section, we are obtaining a statistical overview of our training dataset to better understand the characteristics of the variables involved. By using the describe method, we generate a summary that provides key statistics for each column, such as the count of non-missing values, mean, average, standard deviation, a measure of variability, minimum and maximum values, as well as the 25th, 50th, median, and 75th percentiles. This gives us a clearer picture of the data's distribution and scale, helping us identify potential issues like outliers or unusual distributions. For instance, we can see that the average age of participants is around 10.4 years, with a range from 5 to 22 years, while other variables like the CGS score show a wider spread, indicating varying levels of scores among participants. Overall, this statistical summary is crucial for informing our analysis and model building decisions, as it helps us gauge the data's characteristics before diving deeper into any modeling or predictions. The train data.info function provides a concise overview of the training dataset, revealing that it contains 3960 entries and 82 columns. Each column has a specific data type, with most being numerical, either float or integer, while some are categorical objects. The output also shows how many nonal values are present in each column, which helps us identify missing data. For instance, columns like CGS, CGS score and physical BMI have many missing values. This information is crucial for understanding the dataset's structure and any data cleaning that may be needed before analysis. The line train data, SII, dot value counts, shows how often each label appears in the C column of the training data. From the output, we can see that the majority of entries have a label of 0, 0.0, 1594 occurrences, followed by 1 1.0, 730, 2.0, 378, and only a few instances of 3.0, 34, indicating that the dataset is imbalanced, 
with most samples falling into the lowest category. In this section of code, we are cleaning up the dataset by focusing on columns that have more than 50% of their values present, ensuring we only keep the more reliable data. We calculate the threshold for non-null values, then filter the columns based on this criteria. After that, we go through the remaining data and replace any missing values with zero, which helps maintain consistency and avoids issues during analysis or modeling. In this part of the code, we first define our target column, which is labeled as II, as this is what we want to predict or analyze. Next, we clean the dataset by removing any rows that have missing values in the SII column, ensuring that we only work with complete data for our target variable. Finally, we check the results by displaying the first few entries and getting an overview of the cleaned dataset to confirm that the unwanted rows have been successfully removed. In this section, we perform exploratory data analysis by first identifying the categorical columns in our dataset, which include various seasonal and demographic features. We then create a series of box plots to visualize the relationship between the target variable as II and each of these categorical columns. The box plots are arranged in a grid format, allowing us to see how SII varies across different seasons for each category. By rotating the x-axis labels for better readability, we aim to identify any patterns or trends that may help in understanding how these categorical factors influence the target variable, ultimately enhancing our data insights before moving on to modeling. In this part of the analysis, we focus on visualizing the relationship between the target variable SII and all the numerical columns in the cleaned dataset. We first gather all the numerical columns using their data types and then determine how many rows of plots we need based on the number of columns and how many plots we want in each row. With this setup, we create box plots for each numerical feature against SII. Each subplot displays the distribution of the numerical variable for each category of SII, helping us to easily see patterns, outliers, and trends within the data. This visualization allows us to better understand how these numerical features might influence the target variable, providing valuable insights for further analysis or modeling. In this section, we tackle the encoding of categorical columns related to different seasons in our dataset, which helps prepare the data for machine learning. First, we identify the specific columns that represent seasons. To convert these categorical values into a format that can be easily understood by algorithms, we create a mapping dictionary where each season is assigned a unique integer value, spring becomes 0, summer is 1, fall is 2, and winter is 3. We then loop through each of the identified season columns and replace the categorical names with their corresponding integer values using this mapping. This encoding is crucial because most machine learning models require numerical input, and this process ensures that the model can interpret the seasonal data effectively. In this part, we focus on understanding the relationships between the different features in our dataset by creating a correlation matrix. First, we remove the ID column from our cleaned training data, as it doesn't provide any useful information for analysis. Then, we calculate the correlation matrix, which quantifies how strongly pairs of features are related to each other, with values ranging from minus 1 to 1. A positive value indicates a direct relationship, while a negative value indicates an inverse relationship. Next, we visualize this correlation matrix using a heat map, where the colors indicate the strength of the correlations, and the numbers provide precise values. This heat map helps us quickly identify which features are closely linked, aiding in feature selection and analysis for our machine learning model. We can train the model according to correlation matrix, but some of the columns are not available in test data for submission. In this section, we focus on preparing our data for modeling by identifying which columns are common between our cleaned training data and the test data. We use the intersection method to find these shared columns. Next, we create our feature matrix, X, by selecting these common columns while dropping the ID column, as it isn't useful for modeling. Finally, we define our target vector, Y, which consists of the C column that we want to predict. This sets the stage for training our machine learning model. In this part of the code, we first split our feature matrix X and target vector Y into training and testing sets using the train underscore test underscore split function, designating 20% of the data for testing to help evaluate our model's performance later. After that, we apply feature scaling using standard scalar, 
which standardized the features in X to have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. This step helps improve the performance of many machine learning algorithms. Next, we use Principal Component Analysis, PCA, to reduce the dimensionality of our scaled training and testing sets while preserving 95% of the variance in the data, which simplifies the dataset and can enhance the model's efficiency and effectiveness. This process prepares our data for the training of the machine learning model. In this section, we start by creating an instance of the random forest classifier, which is a popular ensemble learning method that combines multiple decision trees to improve prediction accuracy and control overfitting. We specify a few important parameters, such as using 100 trees, n estimators, limiting the maximum depth of each tree to 10, max depth, and setting criteria for splitting and leaf nodes to ensure the model generalize well, min samples split and min samples leaf. Once the model is instantiated, we fit it to our PCA transformed training data, allowing it to learn from the features and target values. This step effectively trains our model, enabling it to make predictions based on the patterns it identifies in the data. In the model evaluation phase, we first use the trained random forest classifier to make predictions on the test set, which consists of data it hasn't seen before. We then generate a classification report that provides detailed metrics such as precision, recall, and F1 score for each class, giving us insight into how well the model performs across different categories. Additionally, we create a confusion matrix to visualize the number of correct and incorrect predictions for each class, helping us identify where the model struggles. Finally, we calculate the overall accuracy of the model, which is about 71%, indicating that it correctly classified 71% of the instances in the test set. This evaluation process is crucial for understanding the model's strengths and weaknesses and guiding any potential improvements. In the submission file creation process, we start by defining the categorical columns that represent different seasons and map their names to numerical values for consistency with our training data. Next. We ensure that any null values in the test dataset are replaced with zero to avoid errors during processing. We then find the common columns between the cleaned training data and the test data, preparing the test data for predictions by dropping the ID column. After scaling the test data using the same standardization method applied to the training data, we reduce its dimensionality with PCA. We use the trained random forest model to make predictions on this processed test data. Finally, we compile the results into a new data frame that includes the original ID from the test dataset alongside the predicted values and save this data frame as a CSV file named submission.csv. The output gives a quick look at the predictions alongside their corresponding IDs. Thank you for joining us on this journey through our data analysis and machine learning process. We hope you found this video informative and inspiring. If you enjoyed the content and would like to support our work, consider buying us a coffee. Your contributions will help us create even more engaging and educational videos. You can donate through Buy Me A Coffee or via UPI. Every bit helps and we appreciate your support. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights and tutorials. Until next time, keep exploring and learning.